Hello everyone, and as always, welcome to Strategy Gaming Dojo, where we find, learn, and play one more turn of the great strategy games, and today we're going to continue our basic tutorial for Gary Grigsby's War in the East 2, and this is part number 8, and this part will talk about doing the air war manually and air directives, and I know that those have caused some confusion amongst people, but I think after this episode you'll get it, you'll understand how they work, and then you can start going in and, and kind of changing some of the default AI assistance and setting some of these air directives yourself and, and do some of the air war yourself. Uh, I, I think ideally you'll do a little bit of a mixture of the two, at least that's how I'm going to play it from what I see so far. So anyway, let's talk about the basics, and that is here at Game Options, right now in this game, I have Automate AI Air Assist not checked, okay? If you do check this, and of course we talked in part six about AI assistance and having this box checked, if you do check this, just be aware what you're really doing there is there's an AI auto assist for, or I should say auto AI air assist, four A's, the, the four A's. You are making that automatic, meaning every time you hit the F12 button to move a phase forward in the game, when you can do that, it automatically presses the AI air assist, okay? And so what does that mean practically? It means if you have this selected, that no matter what manual air directives you put in or how much you move your AOGs or your individual air groups around like we did last time, no matter how much you do that, the AI air assistance may overrule it and probably will overrule it, meaning it will strike uh, air directives that it doesn't think you should run. It will move back to bases, uh, air groups that maybe you've moved or AOGs that you've moved. It will change the assignments of who is assigned to what AOGs to Flieger Corps or to Luftflottes. So if you've put all of that in, it really kind of goes to waste uh, those manual things if you have this checked the minute you hit F12. So if you have this checked, really the only things that you have control over in the air war are the seven big things, day and night, pilot replacement, uh, stance, the headquarters that it follows, uh, supply priority, asset priority, and whether it could do naval ops. Those seven things that are on the card are those will not be overruled by the AI air assist. Even if you have this checked, you can give those big general overall orders to each Luftflotte, Flieger Corps, and uh, AOG, and they won't be overruled by the AI air assist, okay? But everything else you put in will be if you have this checked because it automatically invokes that or puts on AI or assistance every time you hit next phase, okay? So let's leave that off, all right? And talk about how we, you know, operate if that's off. And we'll just pick the grand scenario and have that come up really quickly. And with this off now, you may say, well, I don't know what to do first. I don't, I don't really, you know, know what all I can control, what I can't control. The way I'm going to be playing this game, at least for the foreseeable future, but I really think it's the best way to play it, most efficient way to play it is, once you're up here on air planning, you can go hit AI air assistance, okay? And so you could hit that, and it's going to set all of those things default. Now, this is the first turn, so maybe it's not the best example of that. There wasn't a whole lot for it to do. It was already set up. But if every time you come to the air planning phase, you hit that AI air assist, it will set up a bunch of defaults or a base case, right? But since you don't have this permanently grayed out and pushed down, you can go and manually enter changes to those orders, and then when you hit F12, it's not going to override those. Those will take effect because you haven't hit AI assistance again. Uh, again, when this is grayed, you had that box checked. It automatically does it when you hit next phase. Okay? Um, 
So what is it that we can do? What are error directives? What can we manually control? Well, there are a few ways. Now in the error phase or error planning phase here, these buttons are up. They are, well, this one is, but these buttons are not up during the ground phase. These are air phase or air planning phase only buttons. And they tell you the main basic directives that you can give. Okay, what are air directives? Air directives are just big overall orders or commands that you give your Luftflotte. Um, and it's only at the Luftflotte level. And so, Think of it as very similar to on the ground. If you were at the army group level and you said, our objective is I want you to go capture Smolensk with infantry, okay? Same idea with air directives. They're big overall orders. And what types are there? Well, now remember this button. This means no air directive, and that becomes a little important later. Uh, but just remember it. We have ground support. Okay, so that's one error directive we can give. And how does ground support work? Well, ground support is invoked by the AI. It will actually fly the missions. You don't control those. But when one of your units attacks a Soviet unit or a Soviet unit attacks one of your units, ground support may come into play. Okay, because what will happen is it, it's ground cover, right? Uh, there's an attack or there's a defend, and your Luftwaffe is going to go out with bombers and potentially fighter escorts and bomb the enemy units that are either attacking you or defending against you. That's ground support. It's bombing units on the map that you're in battles with, okay? And they can help, obviously it helps, right? You bomb the enemy unit, it can disrupt them, it can destroy certain things uh, within the unit and it can help you win the battle. And so that's ground support. Same idea on the defense, you're getting attacked and you can take out some of their tanks with, uh, with your bombers. Excellent, you know, it lowers their combat value. There's also a thing in this game called disruption that you don't really see, uh, it's not apparent where it is anywhere, but within the game engine, when you bomb, when you do bombing or you do artillery strikes, uh, units can become somewhat disrupted, which makes it easier for you to route them, for them to shatter or, shatter or for them to surrender. So just something to keep in mind there. So you have ground support. Now ground support uh, will be directed, it could be directed to an army so you can say, I want the air directive, I want to give ground support to 18th Army, or I want to give ground support to 16th Army or 4th Panzer Group. All right, and we'll go in and set these here in a minute, so you'll see that. But you can also do it down to the core level. And so you could look at this core. Uh, this is 28th core or 28 core. You could do just an air directive to give 28 core ground support because you think they're going to be in a lot of battles maybe this turn okay um and so that's the first one ground support the second one is ground attack and ground attack deals with hitting certain hexes uh, it can be a single hex it can be up to 10 hexes around that hex where you're going to be uh trying to hit specific targets those could be airfields, they could be rail yards, they could be ports. So let's just say that we wanted to take out the port at Riga. We could do a ground, or yeah, ground attack. I, I paused there for a second. Ground support, ground attack. We could do a ground attack on the port at Riga and just have this be our target. And the game will set up the actual missions themselves that go up to try to bomb the port at Riga. Or we could try to bomb all of these airfields within this box here. And we could make, uh, and I'll show you how to do that, we could make this our ground attack area. And we could select airfields and the game will do missions to go bomb those airfields. That's ground attack. And that can also do interdiction. Now, if you're an old time war in the East player, uh, interdiction works completely differently in this game. It used to be that uh, bombers would go out and actually hit 
you know, independent units, and you could see that on the map. Now what it does is it, it essentially interdicts hexes, and there will be markers on the map that where your interdiction bombing would happen. And so if the Soviets move through that, they can lose movement points, they can lose men and equipment for moving through those hexes. But we'll get into interdiction. If you're not really familiar what interdiction means, it's really you bombing the movement of Soviet forces or freight. And so, you know, if we bombed up and down this railway, we could stop freight from coming down it uh, through interdiction in these hexes. And it's just bombing to stop or slow down moving Soviet units or freight, okay? And we'll get to that in a second. Uh, ground attack is the second one. So ground, con or, uh, ground support, ground attack, and then you have strategic bombing. Strategic bombing could be bombing a city and then you would have to select, you want to bomb the manpower, the armaments factories. The You could also, with this one, do a strategic bomb, bombing campaign against the port or the airfield. And so that is the third one. The fourth one is air recon. Okay, and air recon is very useful in this game. You need to do it, and essentially what we'll do is set up a box here somewhere, maybe here, here. Now you can do multiple of these. Every Luftflotte could have up to 34 air directives if you want it to. Now you really don't have that many planes for it to set up that many missions. Um, but you could if you wanted to. I think a typical number is really around three to five air directives per Luftflotte. And so when you think about it, you've only got three Luftflottes, at least for now, at the start of the game. Later on, you may have four or five, uh, but really you give it three to five big general orders and it will the game will assign air groups if you want it to, or you can assign them, but it will actually set up the missions and go try to accomplish that air directive. All right, so we have recon, we'll set one of those up. And then we have air superiority. What is that? Well, of course, that's your fighters flying over a certain area, whatever area you want, and uh, trying to establish air superiority in that area, meaning so it, they will try to engage any Soviet aircraft that enter that space to try to keep that clear of Soviet aircraft and leave the Luftwaffe in charge of that air. Superiority, right? The final one, which you will almost never use, is naval patrol. That is much like interdiction back on ground attack, but you're interdicting sea hexes. And so here in the Gulf of Riga, if we didn't want the Soviets to be able to get supply into here, we could do this naval bombing out here and it would set up little what almost look like little mines or something out here and as soviet transports try to come through here it could you know really damage them keep them from getting uh freight down here to riga that is naval interdiction you'll hardly ever use that and so really you hardly use naval inter and this just shows you battle sites it, I, they should move this over so it's not like it's part of this, I think. Uh, but anyway, you're hardly ever going to use naval patrol. You're hardly ever going to use strategic bombing. So really, you only have four to worry about. Ground support, ground attack. Now, there are about six different kinds of ground attack. So that adds a little complexity. But really, ground support, ground attack, recon, and air superiority. Those are the, the uh, four that you're really going to be focusing on if you give your own manual directives. But before we do that, let's move down here. Now remember, we have AI assist off. If we go and enter in a bunch of orders and then say, eh, I'm not sure, maybe I'll go back to the computer what the AI wants to do, you can hit this at any time during the air planning phase. It'll essentially wipe out whatever you've put in and go back to what the computer wants to do. So just keep that in mind. And also don't mistakenly hit AI air assist. Maybe you think, ah, I can't remember if I did or I didn't. Well, if you do hit it again uh, here, if you do hit it again, it's going to wipe out all of the manual work that you've done. So, I, I mean, maybe you go ahead and do it, but just keep that in mind. Now, 
Now that we're out here manually, we did this before, right? But let's go to call left four. So we're down here at call left four, and you see it's actually stationed at two different bases. It's very spread out, uh, really. So let's just say that we, you know, want that to not be quite so spread out. Now, if we held down shift, we could move a box of that size. Well, that's a really big box. That's part of the problem, right? We don't want it to be that big. We want them to be stationed closer together. Okay, so let's hold down control and let's move them up to these two bases. All right, so we just control, left click. We draw the box, however big we want it to be. We let go of the left button and boom. Now they're gonna rebase here whenever we want them to. We can go to transfer, we can say plan it, and they'll do it at the very end of the turn, or we can say, hey, do it immediately, and they'll do it, and now they're up here, okay? So just remember that, again, you can move these around to different air bases if you want to, and that's one way to do it. Uh, you can also go down, look at the air bases. You can see the air groups at that air base and you can see the air groups at this air base okay uh, you can also give them individual orders or things to do at that level but we're not going to go to that level of detail in this episode um, and always remember you can go here look at your air groups now we went over all of this last time i'm just bringing it up again kind of as a refresher you can always go look at these you can see what this aog call left four panzer group um, is all made up of, you know, what kind of planes, how many they are, what they're good at, what they're not. You can manually upgrade them if you want to, so on and so forth. Okay, so then you're now doing manual. You've decided you're gonna do this manually, all right? These commands still apply. You can go in there or you should go in there, I should say, and make sure these are set the way you want because these really still can work the same way. Now you can do some things manually too if you want, but if you have this on advance, the game is going to try to advance Luftflotte 1. Just like uh, if the AI air assist is on, you're giving it an order. So you can put on advance and it will try to advance. Uh, you should put on here who you want it to follow. Okay, and that's a, just general orders that it's going to follow. But we can then also go in next air planning phase and if we don't like where something's moved we can move it and we can move it around and the ai will not be overruling that okay so you should still pay attention to these um okay but let's go set some air directives and this is really how you're going to manually control your air force uh, a few things i do want to show you about the air war though this is the message level that you'll be getting uh, when the air war plays out in the air execution phase, okay? And so this just, you know, this is how much detail you're going to be getting. Make sure you set this before you go to air execution because things get really wonky if you start trying to change that while it's executing, all right? Another thing that you can do is go up here, show air directive targets. This is very helpful. Oh, one thing I'll point out. Now we did go ahead and hit the AI assist button. So it has already set up some default air directives. But if we had not done that, it wouldn't really matter on turn one. On turn one, the game would have already, you know, it comes like stock default with certain air directives, okay? Um, just something to keep in mind. But we can go up here and look at what those are. And if we back up there, so if you go up to this map, it'll show you we're running recon in this box. We are doing ground attack in this box. Ground support to whatever headquarters is right up here when we could go look. But this is how ground support works. Ground support, like Luftflotte 2, is doing ground support here. And if we went and clicked on that, we would see Army Group Center. And that's why this box is here is because underneath there in blue, you can't see it. But if we t actually took these off, no, if we took these off, um, if we took these off, well, we're on 
Blue Flotta 2 now, you would see that Army Group Center is actually here. And so when you're running ground support for something, it'll make that box right underneath the headquarters for those units. Uh, so you can see, and you can see it here, ground support Luft Flotta 1. Uh, we could go click on this and we can see who it's running ground support for. Army Group North. So all of Army Group North is getting ground support, and therefore that ground support box, when we have this up here picked, is right underneath Army Group North's headquarters, okay? Uh, let's go out of that, though, and go back to these boxes. And again, it's that right there, that map selection. You can see all of the boxes. Now you may say, what is the purple and what is the green? The purple is where the game has enough planes. Okay, so you've given the air direct, we haven't, but let's make believe. We've given the ground attack air directive. It's in, the, in this box. We don't really know what it's for yet. We'd have to click on it and see what they're targeting, uh, but probably airfields on turn one. You do ground attack and bomb every airfield you can on turn one, day one. Uh, because you have a massive bonus from the game when for everything you do on day one, turn one, okay? Um, so we've got a ground attack set up here in this box, and we see all of this purple. What that purple means is the game has enough bombers to run those missions, and it's showing you all of the potential hexes that it does have enough bombers to run those missions. If this box was moved, let's say, out here, that's out of range of our bombers, our bombers can't get there, you would just see this kind of, you know, reddish, pinkish color underneath here, and you would know, I don't have any bombers that are assigned to missions for this air directive, okay? Uh, and so it's just a very quick way to see, okay, we've got enough planes to do this, uh, we got, you know, enough planes to do this. My understanding is the purple, like this, means it's higher intensity, but we'll get into that in a moment. What does the green mean? Green means that you uh, fighters, you have fighter escort available in these areas. And you may say, gosh, that doesn't seem like it's very far. Well, one thing is the Germans don't have a lot of fighters, uh, just in general. When you compare them to the Allies later on, especially on the Western Front, they don't have a lot of fighters, and those fighters don't have a lot of range. And so their range is only 14 hexes. Well, if we get down in here and start looking around, I'll take this off for a second, but if we look at JG-54 and where it is up here, right here. I mean, it can only get out here so many hexes, right? And it's only got 95 planes, if I remember correct. Oh, I was wrong. 138. It's, I say only 138. You may say, well, that sounds like a decent number. Really, for fighters, for all of Army Group North up here, for all of Luft Flotta 1, that's not very many fighters. Uh, Luft Flotta 2 has 276. Now the center is bigger. But if we get down here to Luft Flotta 4, it's got 376 fighters. Again, it's a bigger front, but still you can kind of see, relatively speaking, uh, Luft Flotta 1 does not have that many fighters. And that's why you're not getting a whole lot of escort out here. And they're limited by their range. And you may say, well, how, how do you know what the range is or whatever? Let's click on JG-54. I've been told Slavic speakers, Germanic speakers, J is Y. Uh, I get that, uh, but I'm not going to keep saying YG-54 when it's a J to me. <laughs> so, you know, if it's YG-54, that's, you know, I understand that J is pronounced Y in German and Slavic. I, I, that's fine. I'm going to call it JG-54. I think we all know what I'm talking about. Uh, JG-54, we can come here and look. And you can see radius in miles, 144. Okay, well, every hex is 10 miles, right? So 14 hexes. We could also, for JG54, hit the ring circles. And now you can really see how, just how far they can get out here. And as you, know, as you can see from these air bases where JG54 is currently stationed, and you should really always try, because of this reason, you should try to have your fighters at your most forward air base that you can, 
just a tip. Uh, but let's count out here. You know, it's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. It's really only about 12. Uh, in some cases, 14 hexes out here for the range. I think they don't take it all the way to 14 because it's got to be able to do a little fighting out here and get back, right? And so if the range is 144, it stops it at like 12 hexes. So it has a little left over and you're not constantly crashing on your way back back. Uh, and so our escorts can only go out to here. These are all the fighters in Luftflotte 1, so that's why you're not getting a lot of escort. Okay, so let's then click out of here. Let's get out of here. Let's get out of here. And to do that, you can do it a few different ways. You can either just go click over here on one of the buttons for the air directive you want to give. And when you do that, it comes up with a proposed air directive. And you'll know that because it's got an asterisk and it's in bold. All right. So these are the ones the game already set up by default. Or if you push the AI air assist, it will set up ones for this planning phase. So when we get to turn two and we get into air planning, uh, we did not have AI air assist on. At the start of the turn, these will probably be about the same. I mean, they're not going to really change because the AI air assist hasn't been invoked. You may want to go up and hit the button, and it'll give you new default ones. Now, you might not like those, and you can change them. Uh, but I would say at the start of every air planning phase, go ahead and hit the button, at least until you're like an expert at this. And you say, ah, you know, I don't even want to mess around with changing what the game already puts on. Okay, so what do we have here? A new ground support air directive. All right, and right now it's set this ground support is set up for Army Group North in a directive we've already got default set up. All right, so let's say, you know what, that's all well and good, you know, Army Group North ground support. I really want to focus on 18th Army and give it ground support, okay? When you hit this button, it pops up here, you're going to start building an air directive, all right. And when this is here, you're ready to go. Now you could click on it again just to make sure, but you're ready to go to build this one. And you just start moving down the boxes in following directions. So ground support air directive. Great settings. Ground headquarters. Select a ground headquarters. Select ground headquarters. And you can come down here and say, oh, okay, I should probably select a ground headquarters. <laughs> now you could do that either at the group level uh, the Army Group level, we already see that. It picked Army Group North for a directive. Um, you could do 4th Panzer Group, 16th Army, 18th Army. You could do individual cores underneath those armies. But let's just pick 18th Army. Excellent. All right. So now we've set up. So far, you still have to confirm it. Always make sure you do that at the end. Um, right now, we're just building it. So what else do we have to do? We've picked 18th Army, excellent. Fly weather, we're saying greater than poor. Uh, okay, uh, we could make that greater than fair, greater than good. We could make it only fly if the weather is excellent. Uh, fly no matter what, even in the middle of a blizzard, fly all or greater than poor. So far in my testing of the game, pretty much any, uh, you know, greater than poor is kind of a default because you don't want to be flying in really poor weather. You'll get too many operational losses, but greater than poor is okay. You know, if it's fair, it's fine. And you're going to be flying over multiple days usually. Well, with ground support, that's, that's kind of set up for all seven days. It's set up for any time there is a battle. The game will go through its algorithm and decide whether it should send out a ground support mission. All right. Assigned, auto, we see here, and it has auto assigned Luftwaffe 1, all of it, 193, 138. So 193 bombers, 138 fighters. Now they just all happen to be in one Flieger Corps because that's how the Luftwaffe is set up. And you can see underneath here the things that are in it. So this is auto assigned, all right? Um, you can pick them individually. I would recommend for ground support, you not do that, that you not divide them up, okay? Let the game pick how it runs the missions. Now, you may be confused and say mission 193. That Those are bombers. They are the one, 
the main aircraft bombers are that run these missions. Now they may get fighter escorts, and you see here escort, we have 130 eight available which is the maximum that we could possibly have available and they again all happen to be in one fleeter core in this case um you can pick these individually but for ground support i would not when i say you can let's just say for some reason we didn't want fighter escort we could take these out if we wanted to but for now let's just not get that down into the weeds let's let the game auto assign who's going to be running those missions which aogs which actual air groups themselves will be running those missions okay that's all you have to do to do ground support confirm confirm the air directive now you see a new one that is set up right there now that is still highlighted so you know you could click on it and you could go change it because all of its information is in the box here you could actually i don't know where 18th army headquarters is it's down in here somewhere let's not go look at it but there will be a box underneath it that says ground support 18th army all right now let's go change one that's already pre-existing and in this case we're going to pick this recon one that's right here whoa all right so let's back up here and this error directive uh i really want to take those ring circles off i'll do that in a minute all right, the game has set this up for you as a recon air directive, and it's running recon in this entire area, this entire box. And as you can see, it's all lit up in purple here, so it does have enough aircraft to cover these hexes out here and to run missions to all of these hexes. It has aircraft that has a far enough range, so that's all good. It is too far and or maybe it's not set up for it to have any fighter escort so there is no green here you're only going to see purple these are going to be flying unescorted generally for recon that's okay i mean you're going to have to fly a lot of recon without escorts because they do go further they have, they've got further range and also because usually it's like two or three recon planes that go out at a time they snap pictures they come back at a high altitude uh and so you know, you're just, it's not worth it to run fighter escorts out there for them. And in a lot of cases, you couldn't even if you wanted to. I think the fighters end right here. So I guess they could escort them to here, but that's about it. Okay, so now then, let's go down and look at the recon air directive settings. And again, when you click up here, this you're choosing which air directive you want to look at. Or here, if you want to set up a new one, you would click on that. Uh, but you, you click on this, and then you go down here and see all of the settings for it. You can change those if you want to. So strategic, well, we're going to say no, because really we don't have that much strategic recon aircraft. They are you know, down here in these special AOGs. That's not the purpose of this. What we're trying to do is ta excuse me, tactical recon and that's the major, vast majority of the kind of recon the Germans did during World War II and the vast majority that will be doing um, as the Luftwaffe. So strategic, no. You could turn this to yes. It gives you a few different options. All right. Target hex 191-144. That's that. All right. Now, when you set up your own, you will just go out here on the map and click somewhere and that will be the target hex and you may say oh gosh i'm nervous i might not get it in the right place that's okay because you can go left click on this and you can move this box anywhere you want all right within reason don't get crazy out there moving your target hexes uh you can do that right here as well you can click on that and now it'll say left click on the map at the target hex okay I just put it right back where it was, but I could have put it over here and it would have drawn the same size box around that hex. Easy enough. Staging base, Insterberg. Um, what is a staging base? Well, the game, when it sets up these missions to accomplish this air directive, is going to take all of the planes that it wants to be part of that mission or all of the different air groups, and they're all going to meet 
at Insterberg. So if there's some up, you know, there's not, of course, it's the Baltic Sea. But if there were an airbase up here somewhere, an airbase here, an airbase here, and the game said, I want them all to run these recon missions up here, they would come to Insterberg, meet up, and run them together. And that's how the game also kind of deals with, you know, you you want to have your bombers and escorts fly out together, right? Doesn't make any sense to run escort and have the escort out in here and the bomber way back here. So they meet at a staging base. Now, generally speaking, you want your staging base to be as far forward as you can or as close to the area as you can, or you want it to kind of be centrally, I guess that's the number one rule, really. You want it to be centrally located from all of the different air groups that will be flying those kind of missions, all right? Let the game pick this. I mean, unless you see something crazy, you know, if the, if the game picks Berlin to be the staging base to be recon aircraft that are all coming out of here, you may want to change it, but it really shouldn't do that, okay? And so just kind of let the game pick the staging base. Now then, area is very important. Right now, we've got an area of 10, which is 440 hexes. And I'll back up here. That is 440 hexes, all right? Well, what if we don't want it to be that big? Well, we can go down here and select for it to be five. And now that box is automatically drawn much smaller all around the target hex. And again, you could click on here and move the box if you want to. Um, but now it's down to a five or 120 hexes. And you may say, well, why would I want to do that? Well, because if you have a bigger box out here, you're not going to get as good of information from your recon because the planes just can't cover it as much, right? This box is much easier for them to cover with multiple missions and you'll get a lot better information. But maybe you say, well, I don't really care how good the information is necessarily. I just want a general idea over this entire area what the Soviets may have. Okay, well, run it as a 10. And you uh, 10 is as big as you can make one of these boxes. It doesn't get bigger than that, but you can go all the way down to zero. And you may say, what? Why would I go to zero? Well, that means it's just going to run recon over the target hex, and that's it. And you may say, well, why would I ever do that? Well, when it comes to strategic, if we were doing strategic recon, we may fly a strategic recon up to Leningrad and only care about what is going on directly on the hex at the center of Leningrad, for instance, all right? So you may want to do that. Intensity, low. Well, this comes down to, so let's go back and reset this. Let's just make it like a five, okay? There we go. We'll make it a five. And this will be the recon, the first recon air directive that we're running. You may say, well, why are there two? Well, if we look at the second one, it's up here. The, the first one was down here, right? And you may want to have it set up as two or three different recon areas because you're going to have different, the game will select different air groups to run them. It may be more efficient because it'll select the air groups right up here to run out of Tilsit and they'll go do that, and then I'll uh, select the recon air groups from here to go up here to Instaberg, and they'll run this one, and then there may be a base down here they all congregate at and run one over Minsk, let's say, okay? So that's why you would have multiple recon boxes, uh, just to make sure you're covering all the area, and it's most efficient from a staging perspective, all right? But let's go back to our first one here. Um, we've got that set up, and you see intensity. Well, how, how does this work? Well, intensity, if we look down here, it says strike number. Forget the word strike, really, when it comes to recon, obviously. It's not a strike, it's just missions. What this is, is mission number. And right now, we've got mission, uh, we've got this on auto. And what it's telling you is that low intensity, this would run 16 missions, okay? Well, let's click it up to medium. Now it would run 32 missions, so you're going to get more and more information from your recon as you up the intensity level. High, you're going to get 62 missions, okay? And so this is a very easy way to tell the game how many missions or how uh, how much you want to know about that recon area. And you may say, well, why not always have it on high? 
Well, that's going to use up all your utility plane flying miles, and you might not be able to run these other recons, right? So you have to kind of balance those things. Um, uh, you can also down here at strike number, which is really mission number, you can do this as a custom number. So whatever your intensity supposedly is, you can say, I actually want you to run 40. Uh, and it'll pop up here, custom 40 for intensity. All right, fly weather, you get the idea. We already talked about that with ground support and you're just telling it, I want you to run this if it's greater than poor. Then it tells you the current weather, all right? Before we go down here, let's look over to the right and look at target priorities. And for your recon, you're gonna be saying, I want you when you're out there snapping pictures to prioritize airfields, Soviet units, railways, ports, ferries, interdiction. So where is freight moving? Where are Soviet forces moving, okay? Or rail yards, or some com combination thereof. The priorities are high, medium, or normal, I guess, medium, normal, low, and none, or ignore, okay? So you can say, you know what? I don't give a dang about the ports. We know where their ports are. We're, we're Germans, we have maps, we know where their ports are. Now you won't have very specific information about that port, but yeah, you know, you're kind of like, eh, whatever. This is also just tactical recon. And so in some cases you don't really care about ports or you know ferries, let's say, from a tactical recon perspective, because this is just about what are we going to be fighting or in the first turn here, what airfields are we going to be bombing? Which airfields do we want to bomb? And as you can see, the game as a default already gave you a high for airfield. Okay, uh, you could also it's got a it's got a low for units and interdiction. That's kind of a nice mix, I think, because it's going to give you a lot of information about airfields that you want to hit on turn one. It's very important that you do that. And then it's also going to tell you, hey, we got a little information, too, about Soviet units and some of the ways that they're going to be moving freight and troops about the map. All right. So that that looks pretty good to me for an initial recon. Now, later on, we're not going to give a dang about airfields. We're going to care all about units and interdiction. All right, for recon, tactical recon anyway. Okay, so now then we get down here to schedule. I tell you what, I don't really mess with this one a lot. I just kind of keep what the game has. And if I am building my own, I'll kind of go and look and see how the game sets it up. This is just the days of the week. It's actually going to run recon. Now we may we remember for ground support, it's all seven days. So we didn't have to select this because anytime there's an attack or defend, it's going to be running those kind of missions. Okay, um, but in for recon, you can set it up for which days it will run. We definitely want it on day one because we're going to be doing bombing missions on day one. Uh, but we also have it on day three and day five. Now, if you click these off, the intensity or the number of these missions running on day one may very well be more because you're not running it other days of the week. It tries to spread out the number, you know, right now we've got it set for 40 missions. It tries to spread those out. Now, be careful though, if you took these two off and you said run them all on day one, it may not have enough aircraft to turn around and run all 40 missions on day one one and then it's not going to run them any other days so just keep that in mind um strike number again mission number altitude now i can tell you i've got i actually went in and changed this to fifteen thousand feet when i booted this up some other time if you haven't played a lot of war in the pacific where this is very important i wouldn't worry about these too much i'm going to give you some general rules and that is altitude for recon really needs to be at about 10,000 feet or above. Soviet flak can reach up to five or 6,000 feet. As you move on, usually it can get up to uh, right about 10,000 feet. In war in the Pacific, the general rules fly above 10,000 feet and flak is not going to hurt you, okay? So just a general rule. You also want your escorts uh, to be along, and generally they would fly at about 10,000 feet. Now your bombers, okay, but your your escorts, 
Uh, we'll get to that. Your bombers generally between somewhere between 6,000 and 9,000 feet is a general, especially for level bombers, what they call level bombers. Uh, six to 9,000 feet makes a lot of sense, uh, historically speaking as well. Uh, that's, you know, kind of a good range. It's out of range of most of the flak that you would be getting from the ground. It also has a pretty good accuracy at that level as you go higher and higher your bombing accuracy accuracy will get worse and worse okay and that's why we don't fly them up at their max altitude somewhere between six to nine thousand feet is good for bombers and i'll just kind of leave it there uh priority what's the priority of doing this well we've got it at very high you could do uh, we can't go any higher uh you could do high normal low but very high i think makes a lot of sense uh minimum number to fly so we're going to leave this at zero me meaning uh you know we're going to let the game go ahead and decide if it only wants to fly one plane out there now we could set this at five let's just click on this in enter the minimal number of planes in a strike so in one mission um let's just say we don't want it to run any recon under five planes five okay we have, for some reason, we're like, we hate recon missions with only three planes. So we want to set this at five. It's then always going to automatically ask you, enter the minimal number of planes escorting the strike as well. And that's what these two numbers are. Let's just say we always want at least one fighter out there for every recon craft. So we could set that at five as well, five and five. Or you could go back and set this to zero and it will automatically pick that okay um and so the game will look at it and say well should we run this or not run this uh i always leave these as zero and zero and auto uh you can go in uh for instance if you're losing too many bombers when we get to ground attack you may say hey i actually want to not allow it to run missions where i don't at least have five fighters along with it okay that's valid. You may do something like that. You could do that here. Uh, follow path. We're not going to go down that path. Uh, that's a more advanced concept. If you want to know how to do this, where and why would you do this? To avoid flak. So you may want to avoid big cities, for instance, with your flight path. You could bring, uh, let's just say the recon box. Let's move it out here. Um, and let's say, you know what? We don't want to fly this close to Minsk. We think there'll be a lot of AA there. We could fly up here and then down here. Uh, we're not going to do that for this tutorial. And I would say when you're first starting out until you become an advanced player, d don't really worry about that. Partial escort, you're saying, yes, it can go out with a partial escort that is not the full complement that the game thinks should be escorting it. That's fine. We already talked about these boxes. Um, we've got this assigned to Koloff North and Koloff 16. All right. Well, we could clear those assignments, clear all error directive assignments, and now it's under all of Luftflotte 1. This is one of its air operational groups. You can see here assigned, it'll tell you how many could possibly be in the mission and how many escorts. So now you see in Luftflotte 1, we've got 53 util or, uh, recon aircraft and 138 fighters. This is auto. So when you have nothing in here, the game is going to come down and pick which air operational groups to use, or you can set them yourself and when we pop this up here it's off auto and now we see 26 recon planes mission 26 planes available to do that mission now if you don't have if you're going to do it manually like this and you don't have enough planes up here not all of this is going to is going to fill out it's going to maybe not run all of the missions you want it to run it may not be able to run all 40 missions if you don't have enough planes up here or because you're only running them on one day you know we could spread those back out and maybe 26 utility or recon planes could run 40 missions over a week Seems plausible, right? Um, and we could put Col whoops, we could put Call of North up here as well. And now for this mission, we've given it 62. But be careful if you uh, assign them up here, you may not be able to assign them to the other recon boxes because they're in use. All right. And so that is how you set up 
a recon error directive and do it you know with one that was already default set it up by the game let's say you wanted to create your own okay now if you're on this one just keep in mind if you click over on another button here it's going to erase this one this whatever information is down here is the one that's lit up up here you need to get off that uh let's just do it for for fun is that fun i don't know let's uh click on a uh, ground support over here change air directive type it will clear all air directive data it will clear all of this out so don't do that just be careful now you can go over here get off of that screen and you don't have that problem just click you know a cancel over here um but you always want to hit confirm first did i hit confirm i don't remember uh we can go back and look this was the one i was messing with uh yeah it did save all of that information when you save it here uh or when you change it here it all automatically saves but it doesn't let's set up our own new recon okay we've clicked on that it's highlighted it's asterisk we can go down here just start following directions uh strategic no left click on the map to select a target hex okay let's go out and try to recon around minsk so we're going to click right there it's going to head this direction right by minsk, minsk to our target hex we've set or we did not the ai set the staging base as ebon road okay there's ebon road and you can see they're all going to meet up there and come out to do this recon now then let's say we want to go big around minsk and there we go and as you can see we don't have enough recon available or it doesn't have well we know it's got the range but we're seeing here we do not have enough planes available for this mission there's only 17 from the auto that's because we assigned those aogs to the other recon mission and so there just aren't enough here and it's telling you that we can't run all of this and so you won't see it there we are seeing that the escorts will come out here just a little ways they do escort out this far anyway and then you can see here that's because the auto has uh you know all of the fighters from uh one flieger corps or luft flotta one available uh for escort uh for this so that's all good let's say ah you know what uh let's pick on coloft 16 and add it to this and now we're off of auto and it's up to 17 and you can see eh, it didn't really improve things and because we took it off auto now we're not even getting um, escort help so we could put jg54 up here our fighter wing and now it shows 138 escorts as well for this mission but again be careful once they're in here and assigned they might not be able to help another air directive over here all right and so we could go through here and set all of these things again the intensity you know let's bump it up let's get really intense and go all the way to high which would be 70 missions and that may move this back even more now it didn't in this case but it could um so intensity fly weather the current weather the days it will do it strike numbers uh we've got that at 70 because we really kind of set it with the intensity right let's say we think 70 is too much we want 68 then it'll go custom 68 all right the altitude we say we want to make sure we don't get hit by flak 10,000. priority very high we're not that worried about it let's just keep it down to normal all right minimum we don't want less than three aircraft to go out at a time uh if there's only two available don't run the mission okay and we we want them to be supported by at least one fighter okay there you go um follow path we're not going to worry about it partial escort yeah we'll say that nah we'll say no all right and we could change that and then we could come up here and say actually we want to know where all of their ferries are in in minsk uh, we're looking for a ferry in Minsk and so and all of the area around it here now it's only going to run it out to here but we're trying to run it all the way to here um, and that's how you would set that up again you can go down here and subtract or add any air groups that you want to or AOGs in this case that you want to but just be careful 
once you put them up here, they may not be available for other error directives. And with that, I'm going to stop this episode. And when we come back next time, we've now done ground support and we've done recon. Those are the two kind of backbones of what you do. Those are the two more important ones, I would say, really. When we come back next time, we're going to talk about ground attack and air superiority, the other two that you will really use, uh, not quite as often, I don't think, as ground support and uh, recon. Those are the backbone again. But we're going to come back and talk about those other two, and we're going to talk about putting it all together, meaning we are going to set up all of Luftflotte 1 from scratch to do day one and turn one bombing in what I think is the most efficient way. All right. Hopefully you found this helpful. If you have any questions, uh, of course, let me know down in the comments. Uh, also, always, you know, like if you like a video, like it because it gives me feedback as far as you know what people want to see, what they don't want to see. Uh, if you haven't joined us on Discord yet, there is a lot of good information that's happening on Discord. Uh, just people that are also testing the game, seeing different things about the game, and have a lot of information to share above and beyond what I share. So it's a good resource. Anyway, this has been Strategy Gaming Dojo. I hope you had a good time. I had a blast. I learned a lot. Hopefully you did too. Have a good one.